Hello and welcome to my second video about electricity. Uh, before I start the actual lesson, I'd like to go over the homework question from last day, which was, what is work, energy, and power? Um, yeah, so work is really, energy is being used. It can also be described as change in energy. Um, and that's, that's the, the simplest definition I can give. A lot of you guys define it as force times distance, which is still correct. If you have a box and you move it five meters, well you, um, that's going to take energy, and it's going to change the amount of energy that you have in your system uh, from start to finish. So yeah, that's correct. It's not like electrical work um, because you can't because work is more broad than just. Uh, mechanical or electrical. Another definition I got was uh, the mass of the object times the height that you lift up times the amount of gravity that you have. Also completely correct. You're still changing the amount of energy you have. Um, but there's other ways too, right? Like you can make it, making light, that's changing the amount of energy you have. Like heat or whatever. So energy, introducing the circular definition, Energy is your ability to do work. It's like your potential to do work. Um, yeah, you can have potential and kinetic energy, but in the end, that energy is probably going to be used to do work um, in some, some form or another. It's like a currency. You can't do work without energy, but you can't have energy without doing work. Um, hopefully that makes sense and that isn't really confusing. Power is quite simple if you understand energy and work, or even if you don't, you can just accept the definitions. Power is the rate of doing work, like kilometers per hour, it's work per, uh, per time. Um, you calculate it. Power, which is measured in watts, not to be confused with work, um, equals, this, this W by the way is the work W, and this W is the watts W. Yeah, just so you don't get confused. Uh, it's equal to volts times amps. In advance. And that makes sense, because volts is the amount of energy per electron, and amps is the speed at which it's moving, so, or the rate at which they're coming in. So, if you add the two together, you get, oh my, you get um, power. Okay, now then. Capacitors, real fun stuff, they store energy. But hang on, so do batteries. So I'm going to talk about batteries first, and then conductors later. A battery converts um, converts chemical energy to uh, electrical energy. Ele energy. Yeah, so how does it do that? Well, you've got your positive an um, ion, for instance, cadmium, cadmium, I don't know, and nickel uh, in an ICAD battery. And then if you, uh, if you connect them with a, with a conductor, then the electrons are going to flow from the negative side to the positive, um, the positive terminal on your battery. If you're doing cross-section, it's the same thing here. Um, and I'm just drawing in the insulator between them. There's an insulator between both of the electrodes so they don't react when you're not touching it to a circuit. Okay, capacitors. They're a little different, but they do the same thing, sort of. Um, a capacitor is a two terminal electrical component. That means it's got like two little leads on each side. It's used to store energy in an electric field kind of like static electricity. So if you have your capacitor, and by the way, these little bars, that's the symbol for a capacitor, and uh, these these things are here are your little, your little bars. And if you, I've separated them with a uh, with an insulator, and that insulator is so small that you can get um, static conductance happening. And so when this battery is connected, you have the uh, electrons going that way, 
being crushed by the negative side and pulled by the positive side. And it fills this side of the capacitor with electrons and drains this side of electrons. And then these two red conductive materials become uh, electrically charged. And then when we erase this battery, it's still charged. Just because the circuit is no longer a uh, flowing circuit, doesn't discharge the capacitor. To summarize, capacitors store energy in uh, an electric field. by storing uh, electrical charge. And I'm going to give you a demonstration. We will flip this switch uh, uh, so that this battery is connected to this capacitor. That way it's charged. And then this graph, by the way, is measuring the voltage of this uh, resistor. If we flip the switch back to resi the resistor, there we go, um, the, the spike happens on the graph. And that's because the charge from the capacitor is being released through the uh, into the resistor and through the circuit. And it's, it's neutralizing each cell of the capacitor. I'll show you again. Simulation shows you the arrows of the direction of current. And then the, the voltage spike. Uh, yeah, okay. They're measured in farads after this guy named Michael Faraday. That's what capacity is measured in. Farads. Okay. Pretty simple. Inductors. They're like well, they store compa they store energy like capacitors, and um, and batteries. It's also a two-terminal electrical component, which means it's got it's got one lead and another lead, and that's it. And it stores energy. The difference is it stores it in a magnetic field. I don't know. Maybe you guys once took a battery, and you wrapped it around a nail or something, and then suddenly you had an electromagnet. It's kind of the the same principle. When you put charge through a coil like that, it creates an electric field. The, the the principle of an inductor is that it harnesses that field. When you disconnect the battery, it actually takes time for that for that field to break down. <clears throat> Here's a, another picture of it. Uh, so yeah, you've got your battery here, and you have your uh, coil right here. And when the battery is connected, it creates this, electric, uh, this magnetic field of electrons moving around the coil. And it's a magnet. When you disconnect the battery, okay, that, that field stays there. And it, it takes time for that field to both be created and break down. Contrary to what you might think, because it's kind of instant, it's really not. It takes time. And because it takes time, that the movement in that field, uh, effectively, it stores energy. So it stores energy in a magnetic field. And it releases energy as... Um, which it releases energy as electricity. Much like uh, an electrical generator, which moves a magnet around a field, around a coil, that moving magnetic field uh, creates energy. The units for these are Henry's, um, and Henry's. I don't know if that needs two ends in it. Yeah, Henry. Okay, and this is all the stuff that's equal to over here. Um, is that important? No, not at all. But that's what it's measured in for, for scale and whatnot. And I'm going to show you another simulation of that. Okay, so here we've got an inductor, we've got a resistor, and we've got nine volts coming in this way and two grounds. Grounds are like the dissipate energy. So here we connect it to the uh, to the nine volts. We see the voltage rising. When we disconnect it, the voltage slowly falls. 